Hey friends, Ash here with Sense coming at you guys with another fragrance review today. We're going to be taking a look at this one, Nui DC Polaris by E.C. Miyake. This is the newest flanker in the Nui DC line. Decided to go ahead and take a look at this one because I just did a review of Shades of Colum, which is a warm weather fragrance. This one, a cool weather fragrance. So we're getting a little bit of E.C. Miyake for spring and summer, a little bit of E.C. Miyake for fall and winter. In this video, I'll show you guys the presentation of this fragrance and then break it down a little bit for you, let you know whether or not I think this is something you should check out or not. So let's jump into it. First up, let's take a look at that presentation. All right, let's check out this presentation. You've got here the name of the house at the top of the box, name of the fragrance here in the middle, size and concentration down there at the bottom, nothing on top of the box. Nothing on the sides other than this silver line. Then on the back, you have your ingredient information. On the bottom, you will find your badge code and barcode. Badge code of this bottle is 0008CM. And here's the bottle. It's got a nice matte black finish to it. Got the name of the fragrance here, name of the house at the bottom, and it has these little lines, almost like lines of light coming off of the name of the fragrance. Nothing on the back. On the bottom, you will find your badge code right here and then the cap does click into place. I'll go ahead and waste a couple sprays for you guys. There you go. Atomizer, same as any other in the line. Now, I've mentioned this before, a lot of Yusei Miyake's cool weather fragrances tend to work a little bit better for me. So they seem to be a little bit higher quality, more memorable, and seem to be a better buy for what you're actually paying. You get more bang for your buck. Now, most of Yusei Miyake's warm weather fragrances, you know, your spring, summertime, daytime kind of fragrances are pretty good. They're passable. Uh, the summer releases a lot of times, the specific summer releases, the low DC summer limited editions can be forgettable, but still pleasant. But the cool weather ones, those are the ones that really shine most of the time. Now this one I bought from Fragrance Buy. It is a Canadian discounter. I'm sure you're aware of them. Uh, link in the description in case you're unaware of them but it should be coming to pretty much all discounters, I would think here in the near future. So if you only shop from like Fragrance Net or Fragrance X or wherever, it should pop up there soon. Uh, that being said, I don't think that this is, as of this video, in very wide circulation right now at uh, discount stores. Now, this fragrance is going up against some heavy hitters from this house. You have Oral Sans. You have Pulse of the Night. You have Noir Ombre, which is pretty hard to find, but still really, really good. And then you have fragrances from the Nui DC line, like Noir Argent, which are really good also. So this one would have to be extremely good to stand out from all the other ones that are already out and released from Isi Miyake. And as the video goes, I'll let you know whether I think this one accomplishes that or not. Okay, when you first spray this one on, there's a little bit of bergamot, a little bit of pepper, but not much. It's not something you're going to remember about the fragrance. It doesn't have a bunch of citrus. It doesn't have a lot of peppery spice there in the opening. Can you pick up, you know, a nuance of it? A little, a little hint? Yeah, but that's pretty much all it is, a little hint. More so, the concentration, even right at the beginning, is on the woodiness of the fragrance. Now, when you first spray this one on, it does have a green sort of tinge to it, which I'm going to take is the cypress in the opening. And uh, that is most noticeable in the opening, that green sort of feeling. As the fragrance dries down, even once you just head from the opening into the mid, that really starts to step back and then fade away, that green tinge. And the cypress here is somewhere between a really fresh cypress and a darker, earthier kind of cypress. It's right there between. It's not really a fresh cypress, but at the same time, not really dark either. There's also some patchouli in the opening that I pick up, and that's underneath the cypress. It's not as noticeable as the cypress, and that's probably lending a little bit, a little tinge of that earthiness to the fragrance. And there's also a little bit of smokiness in here, especially as it heads into the mid. It reminds me a little bit of incense, but not a strong amount, not a whole bunch. 
It's probably from the Oud Accord. That's what I would guess because there's nothing in here that really screams out to me, you know, smoke other than that. Uh, but it's not, it's not a lot. It's not heavily smoked. It's not like a heavy incense note. It's just this little waft of smokiness that you'll pick up. And once you head into the mid from the opening and that green kind of aspect from the opening steps back and fades away, it gets a little bit of sweetness that comes in from amber and vanilla. But that's not really the focal point of the fragrance for me. It's more, again, on the woodiness. But the woods in the mid and into the dry down do take on kind of a different aspect than they have in the opening. They come across a little bit uh, deeper, maybe a little bit darker, though it's not really a hardcore dark fragrance. And that's because in the opening, there's this little bit of sharpness with the woods. And that fades, as I mentioned, as it heads into the mid. So the woods do change up a little bit from the opening. As it heads into the dry down, you pick up a little bit of leather. It's kind of a nondescript leather. It's not really a big part of the fragrance. It just kind of sneaks in here and there, it comes across like a black leather. And then the oud accord that's in this fragrance never really smells like actual oud. It's more just kind of like a, like a spiced woody accord, kind of. Uh, they could really put oak <laughs> and I would say, oh, okay, yeah, I get that. So for me, it's not a realistic smelling oud. Now that's not to say it smells bad because it doesn't. It smells really pleasant, it smells really nice, but it's not a, a realistic sort of oud. So if you go into this looking for that, you're probably not gonna find it. So once you hit that full dry down, the fragrance is essentially just kind of a woody, uh, sweet, ambery vanilla, more focus on the woods than the amber and the vanilla. It's most interesting to me in the opening of the fragrance, where it's a little bit sharper, it has that green aspect going on, so you have a little more of a contrast in the open. Once you head into the mid and the dry down, it still smells nice, but it's uh, not quite as interesting for me overall. Now, I know I've mentioned dark as a descriptor here a couple of times, I believe, but it's not truly a dark fragrance in the sense that it's some uber powerful beast of a scent. It's not heavily smoked. You know, there's not a ton of incense in here. It's not really heavy on like dankness or earthiness or anything like that. Now, there are facets of smoke and nuances of earth. You know, you can pick them up on the periphery of the fragrance, but it's not what the fragrance is really trying to put forward. So it's more like those are additional flavors or like toppings or something on, uh, on ice cream. It's not really the main flavor of what you're eating, but it's still there. Now, as far as the fragrance itself, how much I like it, it hasn't really grown on me a lot since I did the first impression. So when I did the first impression, I really enjoyed it, but I wasn't in love with it. I said that I'd probably put it above Oran Sans and below Pulse of the Night and below Noir Ombre. At this point, I think it's for sure below Noir Ombre, for sure below Pulse of the Night, and probably below Oran Sans as well, and probably below Noir Argent also. Now, it's not that this is a bad fragrance, because it's not. It smells pleasant, it's very nice, I enjoy it. It's just those other fragrances are heavy hitters. They are really, really good fragrances. And this one is just good. You know, it's, it's not great to me, it's not excellent, but it is quite good. If you're a fan of the new EDC line, if you're a fan of Isi Miyake's cooler weather fragrances, absolutely check it out because it is quite good. Like I said, it's just those other ones are, they're great. The quality of the fragrance here is good. It's about what you would expect. It doesn't come across smelling uh, really cheap. It doesn't fall apart. You know, it doesn't have these notes that kind of stick out. It doesn't have this chemically kind of vibe to it. It doesn't give you an alcohol blast when you first spray it on. The quality here is really good. As I mentioned, if you're a fan of the line, if you're a fan of the house, check it out for sure. And this is a fragrance that I spent, I believe, around $60 for, and I'm fine with that. I don't think that's overpriced at all. You know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 65 even, not bad. If you can get it for less than that, like in the future, if it pops up for 
$40, $35, it would be a steal at that price. I think it's just for me, it is maybe just not quite as interesting as some of the other cool weather Miyake fragrances out there. But as I've mentioned a number of times, still very good. All right, performance, above average, but not beast mode. Uh, as far as projection goes, really solid in the first hour to hour and a half or so. Longevity, seven, eight hour range, and then it's sitting really close to the skin. I would maybe like it to be just a little bit more powerful, but I can't complain at all because as I mentioned, it is above average. In terms of seasons, fall and winter, as far as day or nighttime, for me it leans nighttime, which again, not really a huge surprise. I mean, you can look at the bottle, it tells you as much. And as far as casual, formal wear, more casual than formal. And it is a potential night out fragrance, a potential date night fragrance because it does have that bit of sweetness in there. But again, focus gonna be more on the woods than the sweetness. Kind of the woodiness 1A and the sweetness 2A, something like that. So I'm just gonna reiterate, I guess, because it makes it sound like maybe I'm dumping on it a little bit and I don't mean that at all. It's just the other fragrances that I've mentioned from Isi Miyake are great. They're some of my favorite fall and wintertime fragrances. I think they're really, 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 really good. This one is a definite thumbs up for me. It's not a fragrance that I would be wishy-washy on or, you know, 75%, definitely not a thumbs down. So I do like it and I think you should absolutely check it out. It's just, you know, when it's going up against what I consider some of the best designer releases for fall and winter over the past four years, four plus years. Um, it's just not, not quite there. But as I've mentioned a number of times, I just want to reiterate, not at all regretting my purchase with this one, thankfully, because 2020 has had some releases that I um, kind of wish I didn't buy. Yeah, those are my thoughts on Louis DC Polaris. Again, uh, I bought it from Fragrance Buy. I haven't seen it at Fragrance Net yet. I haven't seen it at Fragrance X yet. But if I had to guess, it probably pop up there soon. 50 bucks, 60 bucks, not too bad. All right, guys, it's going to do it for me. If you smelled this one, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. As always, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. And I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys. Oh, and it's, it's way better than Shades of Cullum, way better.